Hello and welcome back to Film Exaggeration, and welcome to the Worst of the Worst Month. Oh, you paralyze my mind, and for that, you suck. Oh. Throughout the month of November, I will be reviewing four of the so-called worst movies ever made. All of them are either widely hated or loved for being so bad they're good and I get to spend all this month watching them. You may be asking why I'm doing this. Well, it actually wasn't my idea. I got an email a week ago from someone named DS93 who said, I have sent you the files to four of the worst movies ever made. If you don't review them, I'll delete your YouTube channel, then kill you. I told him I would call the police, and he replied with, According to the police, I don't exist. Normally, I think this is a joke, but I'm going to guess this is the guy who broke into my room. Twice! So, I'm just going to do what he wants until I figure out who he is. Oh, and by the way, dude, I changed the locks to my room, so good luck getting in now. Anyway, the first movie I'm doing is Robot Monster, which is actually the highest rated movie on Rotten Tomatoes we'll see this month. Yay! So we start out with our opening credits, which saves me time as I can just go over the characters right now. There's Roy, Alice, M mother Okay, somehow I don't think the characters are going to matter here. Oh, and I just want to point out that the original screenplay was written by Wyatt or Dung. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I think the funny thing about this is that it says original screenplay as it's showing us a bunch of comic books, one of which with the title Robot Monster. And the movie has died. Ugh, this is our monster? I heard the effects for this movie were bad, but not this bad. Actually, this is a kid named Johnny, playing with his little sister Carla. I apologize for making this obvious joke, and to make it up to you, I'm now going to show you the slightly less obvious joke I could have made. <laughs> The two meet up with two men in a mine, a man known as the Professor, and his assistant Roy. We get some boring small talk between the four until their mother and sister, named Alice, find them. You kids promised you'd take a nap right after lunch if we took you on this picnic and off you scooped. How old do you think they are? We then get some exposition about their father being dead, and eventually they get so bored that even they fall asleep. When Johnny wakes up, he tries to find the other two, but they have left. Good thing, too, as a stock lightning storm is about to hit. Oh, and it turns out Johnny isn't dead. But a bubble machine has suddenly appeared. Fucking bubble! Johnny does what any stupid person would do and not run back to his mother, but hide behind a rock, and we get to finally see our monster. I, I would rather have the kid. No. No, 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 no. I don't care how much creepy music and electric sound effects you use. You cannot make a gorilla with a diver's helmet on scary. The diver from the SpongeBob movie was scarier than that, and that movie was a comedy. Extension Roman, XJ2, reporting to Guidance Roman. I salute you. You are late, 14 minutes. No, I'm sorry, I can't take this thing seriously. And the thing is, the mask is fine, just get rid of the gorilla suit. The funny thing is, they had to spend money on that gorilla suit, so you actually spent more money to make your monster look worse. I guess some things never do die. Today it's CG, before it was putting people into monkey suits. Literally. Alright, so what I can gather from this is that their home planet blew up and now they have come to Earth. They used their death ray to eradicate everyone on the planet except for eight people. How the fuck does that work? The monster, named Roman, is told to kill them because... Hydrogen bomb. Because if the day the Earth stood still could do it, so can we. This movie's the 50s equivalent of an asylum movie, isn't it? Johnny runs back home where he's scolded by his mother, 
It turns out they knew about Roman and built an electric barrier around their home so they couldn't find them. Wait a minute, then why the hell did you go out and have a picnic earlier? And you guys said you were mining for science! So that means you knew the rest of the world had been obliterated by aliens and yet you went outside your safe house anyway? You are literally too stupid to live! Either that or this is some of the worst writing and editing I've ever seen on film. You decide. Maybe we could kill him, huh, huh? No, Johnny. The armies of the entire world tried and failed. We have thrown everything we had at him, but he is impervious. Yeah, he really gives the aliens from Independence Day a run for their money in the Defense Department. Humans, listen to me. Listening. Listening. Due to an error in calculation, there are still a few of you left. You escaped destruction because I did not know you existed. I'm kind of stupid that way. I see five of you who have not been destroyed. Show yourselves and I promise you a painless death. Well, okay. Sorry, honey. He was just a really good negotiator. Seriously, why is it that I have to do so many videos that involve stupid aliens? I had to defend the aliens from signs, there were the Skyline aliens, Jean-Louis, the Plan 9 aliens, and those aliens from Newborn Cuties. KILL IT WITH FIRE! Do you wonder what happened to your fellows? Watch them. Calcinator beam wiped out your last legions. No, not the Asians! That's what I heard. Roman threatens them and then breaks contact. Mother thinks they should make a truce, but the professor says that they will... Oh shit, someone knocked the camera. Oh well. Cut. Print. I don't understand. I thought my speech would make them more than happy to comply. Anyway, it turns out Roy is still alive, somehow, and heads to the house. He tells them that there are two other people still alive, two pilots named Jason and McLeod. And it turns out the reason they managed to avoid being killed by the Death Ray is because of an antibiotic serum that caused them to become immune. Because that's how the human body works. I didn't know that the same medicine that helped me get over a cold could help me survive a nuclear explosion. It turns out Jason and McLeod are blasting off for a space station with tons of serum in the next two days. They then waste two days, and Jason and McLeod are blown up as well as the space station. Which is... just a model plane. You're not fooling anyone. I shall find a way to rid this Earth planet of humans. No! We human will not give up this Earth of ours. There's only five of you left! Once you die, the human race is fucked! They try to negotiate with Roman to let them live, but honestly, I don't care. The movie is giving me no reason to care about anything. If the alien wins, he wins. If he loses, they starve to death and the human race is gone. Roman actually does agree to negotiate, but only with Alice. I will talk with the girl. It is not in the plan, but although I cannot verify it, I feel that she will understand. He's got the hots for her, doesn't he? This is where the inspiration for Earth Girls Are Easy came from. God, I cannot believe I took this role. What the hell was I thinking? I swear the next time I see my agent, I'm going to drown him in barbecue sauce and feed him to the dog. So Johnny runs off, because he's an idiot, and finds Roman, wanting to know why he hates him. You are human. Your people were getting too intelligent. We could not wait until you were strong enough to attack us. We had to attack you first. I think you're just a big bully, picking on people smaller than you are. Now I will kill you. That may be the greatest collection of words I've ever heard in my entire life. You look like a pooped out pinwheel. Your father must be a brilliant scientist. He's got a super serum that keeps people from ever getting sick. How do you know it works? Because he tried it on me and Carla and Alice and Roy and everybody. And we don't get sick even when we swallow capsules with real bad bugs in them. Your dad tried to poison you? Alright, that's it. I'm rushing through the rest of it. It's not like much happens anyway. 
Roy and Alice get married, Carla is strangled to death off screen, fuck you, Roy is pushed off a cliff, and Roman kidnaps Alice. Trust me, that was about two minutes worth of substance compared to the 20 minutes of NOTHING HAPPENING! And again, there's only four people left on the planet. It doesn't matter if they live or die, the human race is screwed! Here's a little lesson on how to write a movie. If you give me no reason to care about what happens in your movie, I'M NOT GONNA CARE ABOUT YOUR MOVIE! How is it you're so strong, Romance? It seems impossible. We Romans obtain our strength from the planet Roman. Oh, so it's like Marklar. Anyway, Roman has fallen in love with Alice and starts to develop feelings. An interesting idea stuck inside freaking robot monster. The professor and mother rescue Alice, but Johnny is killed along with Roman by the Roman leader. Then the movie loses all logic as the leader uses dinosaurs that begin fighting for... I, I don't know. Why are you doing this? Cyclotronic vibrations will smash the planet Earth out of the universe. But I thought you wanted the planet. Why are you trying to destroy it? You know what? I'm going to say it. And nothing you can do will change my mind. These aliens are dumber than the Cyclos. Oh yeah, I fucking said it. At least those guys didn't try to eradicate the thing they wanted in the first place to destroy the three remaining humans who were gonna die anyway. So yeah, it turns out the entire thing was all just a dream. Or was it? Yeah, I don't think so. Go away! Oh, screw you. So that was Robot Monster, and yeah, it was bad. It was really, really bad. I don't want to hate on this movie that much. To be fair, the cinematography is passable, and some of the acting is even decent. SOME of it. But everything else about it is just a mess. The editing is awful, there are continuity errors everywhere, the sound is annoying, the music is repetitive, the story is either dumb or filled with padding, the dialogue sucks, and there is nothing interesting about it. I didn't care about anything going on throughout the entire runtime. It's only an hour long, and it took me three hours to get through. I guess if you want to get some friends over to laugh at its incompetence, you may enjoy it. But even then, there are way better movies with the So Bad It's Good stamp on them. This is just dull. But hey, this movie isn't even on IMDb's bottom 100. Next week we'll be looking at Manos, which currently resides at number 10.